Today, we're going to be doing something really incredible with AI, specifically with GPT-01, the newest model, also known as Strawberry from OpenAI. We're going to be taking a given piece of text, and I'm going to be showing you examples from text that was human written and text that was AI written, and transferring styles from one type of text to another to get different and interesting results. And what this does is it allows us to not only improve the writing of like even a human, but also improve the AI written text so it sounds more human. So let's go into that and see what we can do. So I'm gonna give you the brief overview of what we're doing and I'll demonstrate it and then I'll give you a more detailed breakdown of what is happening here. I have a prompt here that I'm just calling style transfer edit and um, the model that I'm using is 01 preview. This is the most advanced and also most expensive model that we have from OpenAI. It is really good at doing things like editing and this is a kind of editing task, even though it's not really editing in the traditional sense. Now note that O1 Preview is very expensive, but keep in mind how expensive an editor is. The cheapest editor you will likely have is a proofreader, and even they will usually run you a couple hundred dollars to proofread a full book. O1, if you were to run through this process I'm about to show you with the entire book, it's gonna give you a pretty reliable output that you can you know, rest assured is decent, and it also cleans up your text to a certain degree. If you could reliably have that in an editor, I would pay a lot more than it's gonna cost to use the O1 Preview. O1 Preview, depending on how long your entire book is, if you were to use this process on the entire book, it would probably run you 50 to 60 or so dollars. But again, that depends on the size of the book. I'd estimate about $10 per 10,000 words, but that's just kind of a very rough estimate. So you'd have to take that with a grain of salt. But keep in mind, again, that's way cheaper than even a proofreader who is the cheapest type of editor of all. If you were to get a line editor, which is usually a lot more expensive, that can cost you anywhere between one and like four or $5,000. And a lot of the work that would be done by a line editor is gonna be done in, in this process. So. O1 Preview is the model we are using. This will not work with any other model, at least not to the same degree. The instructions look pretty simple here. We have the system message. You will be given two pieces of text, a sample text that represents the desired prose style and the target text that needs improvement. Your task is to rewrite the text in the prose style of the sample text. So we want it to rewrite the original text using a sample that we're gonna give it and a plan that we're gonna give it. And right here is where it pulls in this. And now I am using Novel Crafter for this particular thing. You could do this inside of ChatGPT directly, but you'd have to run through a whole bunch of hoops to like make sure you have the sample text in there. Novel Crafter just makes it really easy for me to just add these little shortcuts in here so that it becomes so much faster to do, which is why I'm doing it here in Novel Crafter. So I say here, Here's the sample text that represents the desired style. And in these brackets, we get this little bit of code, which is pulling in a snippet. In Novel Crafter, you have over here a list of snippets. And I have two here that I've created. One is called sample and one is called plan. So it right here is pulling in the one called sample. So in the finished prompt, you would see that it's got a long sample chapter here. If I go here to look at the sample chapter, this is actually a series of excerpts that I got from J.R.R. Tolkien's The Silmarillion. It's all just available online. I just pulled a couple of snippets so that it could have that to read and to look at for this particular project. And then I say, here's the improvement plan to make the target text more like the sample text. And it pulls in an improvement plan. Now you say like, where do you get this improvement plan from? I will get there. And then down here in the user section, I say, here's the target text and it will pull in the content text selection. So I will select a bunch of text that I want to be edited and that will be pulled up into the prompt right here. And then it says rewrite the target text without changing the underlying meaning to match the prose style of the sample text. So let me talk a little bit about this project that we're working on. This is something I actually hired a ghostwriter for to help me out with these it is a list of Arthurian myths and legends that are written in a certain way. They're written very detailed and even has bits of dialogue and things in there, although it's still sort of in a narrative format, like something you could read to your kids or something you could read to yourself, depending on what, you know, if you want it. But I found from the ghostwriter that I had, he did a very, very good job of researching everything. And the overall format and structure and length of the stories are absolutely excellent. And so I have no problem with the work that the ghostwriter has done. However, the only thing that I kind of wish that I could do is to bring it up into a slightly higher level of prose, if you understand what I mean, like a little bit more poetic, a little bit more like 
J.R.R. Tolkien. So that's why I went online, found a few snippets of the Silmarillion and stuck those into my sample, which is right here. So now all I have to do is just select some of this text and I would select about a thousand words or so, although with O1, you can usually reliably do about 2000 that it can spit out, but I try to keep it a little bit shorter just in case it starts rewriting things too much. And then I, all I do is say style transfer edit. And because this is O1, it's gonna take a little while to process everything, but once it's done, we're gonna have a much better thing. So we have the original text here. While Brutus settled himself into a seat of glory, establishing the lands of Britain for himself and all the great kings who would follow him, a far less glorious man was rotting at the far corner of the civilized world, etc. Joseph of Arimathea was a follower of a man called Jesus. The man had claimed that he was an avatar of the great Yahweh, the only true God that all gods are just a shadow of. So that gives you an idea of what the text, the original text looks like. And this is, by the way, the story of the origin of the Holy Grail. And here we go. Now we have uh, some updated, completely revised text using the examples that we gave it. And it goes like this. While Brutus secured his dominion and established the realm of Britain for himself and for the mighty kings who would follow, a man of far lesser renown languished at the furthest bounds of the civilized world amidst shadow and despair. Now Joseph of Arimathea had been a follower of Jesus, who proclaimed himself to be the son of the great Yahweh, the one true God, of whom all other gods are but shadows. And you can tell just the narrative difference that it's making here. It's a little bit higher, and it actually corrected something too, which I wasn't planning on or anything. It made him the son of the great Yahweh, which is actually, I think, more accurate from what I understand, rather than saying an avatar of the great Yahweh. But with this particular example, I do get some like almost too flowery words, like it's trying too hard to actually get in there and use really fancy flowery language. I have toned down my prompt a little bit with the plan, which I'll get into in a second on the language there because it did get a little bit too much. But on the whole, like this was great. This is excellent prose here. I would just give it a quick read through to make sure everything's good. But considering that I'm combining this with a human, the human having written the first draft, I can now make this into something even better because AI does not write this type of text very well, this sort of high and lofty text, a more poetic, epic speech sort of text. It doesn't do that very well. And neither do humans, really. Humans really struggle with it. It's something that Tolkien was obviously very, very good at. It was sort of the thing that sets him apart because he was a linguist. But thanks to AI, I can take what the human wrote and I can edit it with AI and get basically a result that is greater than the sum of their parts. And one of the things I love about AI is that it presents opportunities like this. I can take an asset that I own. So this is a book that was written for me, I paid for it, or I can take a book that I wrote and that book suddenly becomes an asset. And now I can use it as an asset in a whole lot of ways that I couldn't do before AI. I could create a children's book version of these Arthurian tales with AI in just a couple of clicks. I could create a, you know, different languages pretty easily and translate it into different languages. I could create this, obviously this type of version of the text. I could adapt it for YouTube or as an article. Like there's all kinds of things I can do with a given asset that I think we need to be thinking bigger about these sort of things. But that's a side note. Let's go into actually what's going on here and I'll break it down a little bit further for my second example, which is using this method to make AI written text a little bit more human. So to do that, we're gonna to go to my project Shoreline of Stars, which was a project I did a little while ago over live streams, which is basically just prompting. I didn't do any human input in this book whatsoever because I wanted to show just how awful it would turn out without a human guiding things along the way. And that ended up being Shoreline of Stars. Now this was done a little while ago. If I were to redo this project now, I'm pretty sure I could get an actually decent book compared to what I had before, because AI has already come so far. But we're going to go here to the right section. You'll see the beginning of this story. It's very AI-ish. Lots of AI-isms, lots of over-the-top melodramatic stuff. The warm golden light of the setting sun danced across the waters as Sarah and I walked hand in hand along the beach. Her laughter, like the gentle chimes of bells, mingled with the soothing rhythm of the waves lapping against the shore. I couldn't help but steal glances at her, marveling at the way the fading light seemed to make her glow. Remember our first date, Sarah asked a mischievous twinkle in her hazel eyes. I chuckled the memory as vivid as it had happened yesterday. How could I forget? I was so nervous. I spilled coffee all over myself. Very melodramatic, right? And some of this, this method is not going to be able to fix. Like it's still going to maintain the overall structure and the meaning of this text. And that's really where the problem lies. Like it's just not a very realistic scenario. The dialogue's not very realistic. And while on a sentence by sentence level, we're going to be able to clean it up and make it much better on a broader, more structural level, it still is going to need some work. And there's not really 
a way to fix that without completely rewriting it. But I just want to give you the idea of like how we can improve the pros here. So to break this down a little bit, I actually have a second prompt that I am also using in conjunction with this. So I've already introduced you to the style transfer edit prompt. I actually have a style transfer plan prompt. And for this one, I'm just using GPD 4.0. So you don't need 0.1 for this one. You can also use Claude 3.5 Sonnet or whatever the most advanced, uh, I would say use either the most advanced GPT model or the most advanced Claude model, discarding o 01 preview. You don't need to use 01 for this. In fact, it's not actually as good with 01 and you'll spend a lot more money too. And the instructions for this one are quite different. So we have our system message, you are an expert line editor. You will be given two pieces of text, a sample text that represents the desired pro style and a target text that needs improvement. Your task is to create a detailed plan to improve the target text, making it more more similar in pro style and quality to the sample text. Now I have to give credit where credit's due here. The reason I'm using this two-pronged approach is because I had a discussion with Elizabeth Ann West who was using O1 to edit text. And she and the other people at Future Fiction Academy had come up with some very impressive methods of improving the text. And while she did not give me the prompts for that, she did give me the overall structure, the methods that they were using. And as I was playing with, around with those methods, I kind of accidentally stumbled into this style transfer use case. So the way this works at the beginning is to first analyze the target text and your sample text, compare them to each other and create a plan of improvement. Because I found that if you are using O1 preview just to improve the text without a plan, it doesn't do as well. So if you give O1 just the sample text and your current text and ask it to rewrite the current text as to be more in line with the sample text, it doesn't do nearly as good of a job. But if you give it the sample text and a plan for improving the target text, it will eventually use that and it does a much better job of improving the target text. So here we go. I say here's the sample text that represents the desired style. I put this under the AI moniker here because that means the AI thinks it wrote this. And then the user input comes from the user and say, here's the target text that needs improvement. And it'll pull in the selection that I give it. Analyze the sample text carefully, noting its style, tone, structure, and any other noticeable characteristics. Then compare the target text to the sample text, identifying areas where the target text can be improved to more closely match the style and quality of the sample text. Create a detailed plan to improve the target text. Your plan should include, but is not limited to the following areas of improvement. And then I give it a whole bunch of things to watch out for. That's basically the gist of this prompt. So what this prompt does is it gives us a plan to use. So I've already selected a sample here. This is a sample of my own writing because I want this to read a little bit more like me. And by the way, those of you who are asking for ways to get past AI detectors, this is another way to do that because this makes it a lot more human. It kind of also messes up the different markers that people are looking for. So this is one way to do it, although you don't need to worry about that. Just just trust me. So here is a sample of my own writing, and it's a full chapter from my own writing and one that I think is pretty well written, a chapter I'm proud about. And so it's going to take that sample and compare it to the target text. So we go to the right section and I'm going to select this entire first chapter of the AI written text and I'm going to say style transfer plan. Now you want to make sure you have your text backed up before you do this because it is going to rewrite the whole thing. And here we go. So it's creating the plan for improvement. So we have style and tone adjustments, consistent voice, ensure the narrator and the target text maintains a consistent level of maturity and introspection, structural changes. It usually gets into some good stuff here like sentence structure improvements. Varied sentence lengths introduce a mix of short impactful sentences and longer flowing ones mirror the rhythmic variants found in the sample prose which creates dynamic pacing. And it just has a whole bunch of stuff here. And if you run into trouble with this method and you're finding that the output that O1 gives you is a little bit off, check your plan to make sure that the plan is not adding any instructions to do something weird because sometimes it'll give you some stuff that is a little off. So I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to go into my snippet called plan and just paste it in there. And then I'm going to actually discard this because I want my original text back. And now I have both a sample and the plan so that now that I have the plan, if we go back to the prompt for style transfer edit, it can now pull in the sample here and it can pull in the plan here. And then of course it pulls in the target text here. So now let's go ahead, select this entire chapter and select style transfer edit and wait for O1 to do its thing. And once it's done, we should hopefully have something that at least on a sentence by sentence level sounds a lot more like me. 
And here we have the results. The golden hues of the setting sun cast long shadows across the beach as Ethan and Sarah walked side by side along the shoreline. Sarah's laughter intertwined with the rhythmic murmur of the waves, each sound blending into a harmonious melody. Ethan glanced at her, captivated by the way their fading light illuminated her features, lending her an almost ethereal glow. Still a little cheesy because the underlying text was pretty cheesy, but on a sentence by sentence level, this flows so much better. There's just a little bit more humanness in it. As they strolled, Sarah looked up at him, a playful light dancing in her hazel eyes. Do you recall our first date? She inquired. A soft laugh escaped his lips, the memory surfacing with clarity. How could I forget? I was so anxious. I managed to spill coffee all over myself. She smiled, her fingers entwined with his, and then you pretended it was a, the latest fashion statement. He shook his head, a grin tucking at the corners of his mouth. Well, it must have worked. You didn't run away. So some of the differences are subtle, and it's still maintaining the same like meaning in each paragraph. So it's not rearranging paragraphs and rewriting the thing entirely. It's just focusing on kind of a line editing point of view where it's making it from a sentence by sentence structure way more in line with my own writing and it has done a good job and if I were to do this with text that I was already like mostly okay with like it wasn't the cheesiness or anything like that the flow of the story was good all of that stuff then ran it through this method here it would absolutely take that and make it all the better just because it sounds a lot more like me now if you want to get your hands on these two prompts I will make sure that they are in my prompt library which you can find for free in a link down below because these are novel crafter prompts they will appear like a big jumble of letters you'll see it it'll look something like this just a whole jumble of letters here that's just because it's encoded and all you have to do is copy that big jumble of letters come into novel crafter and then here under new prompt create from clipboard and it will create the prompt in its entirety so you won't have to like rearrange anything so it'll select the correct model that I use here it will also select you know the system message, the AI message, the user message, all of those will be in their appropriate boxes. And that's one of the great things about copying a prompt this way in Novel Crafter. So go down below if you want to get this prompt for yourself and I will see you in the next video.